Okay, welcome back everyone after the break. Uh, thanks for having me. I would like to speak a little bit about ethical aspects of online exams and maybe the question of um, how can online exams be less stressful and less intimidating. Um, there's a link already to the slides. If you want to have a copy of the slides, I will, I will paste this link later on um, in the chat. So short disclaimer at the beginning, uh, I'm an engineer by nature. I'm, I'm not a didact, I'm not um, an ethnologist. Still, I've made some experience with online exams that I would like to share. Uh, some, some further organizational remarks. I said the slides are available, you can have them. Uh, will there be a recording? Maybe, maybe not, I would try. And if you have questions, I would like to postpone the questions uh, to after the talk. Um, still, if you have any questions or comments in between, uh, feel free to go to this website and I will try to put this link also into the chat. And by the way, if I do so, there's also a copy to the slides in the chat now. Um, and for the survey, I think you can also go to menti.com and there's a, there's a number code uh, that you also find in the chat. And I will, I will check back to the end of the talk to this page to see if there are questions or comments or whatever related to the talk. Okay, so the, the question, um, of course, that we all ask ourselves uh, as lecturers at the university is how to deal with online exams or how to deal with take-home exams. Um, and the more general question, that's why I've put this here in parentheses, is maybe, maybe how to deal with exams. And um, yeah, so the, the problem, problem in quotation marks that we all dealt with um, or that is maybe what, what examiners are afraid of is that in online exams, that in take-home exams where students do the exam from their home, um, students are much more free to communicate, uh, to communicate with other persons, to communicate with other students. Um, then, of course, students can just much more easily copy from somewhere else um, and uh, maybe plagiarize, uh, do copy and paste uh, from internet sources, from books, uh, from their um, lecture notes and so on and so on. And then a really big problem, and I, I still have not found a good solution against this, is contract cheating so that students really pay a third person uh, to take care of their exam and to solve the exam for them. And if you talk to lots of examiners about uh, such type of, of exams, then you, you often hear sentences or quotes like this. I don't want to accuse the students of anything but like this and this and that. Or um, we have lots, we have had lots of issues and problems with online exams. Or I'm so happy now that we have exams on site again in presence with the students. Um, or oh, the students now in the online exam, they have copied my exam tasks. Now, now they are burned. And now I need to, to uh, need to think about new exam tasks. And okay, if, if the integrity of your exam um, in the past was because your exam tasks were confidential, I, I would argue it was not a good exam. Okay, so the, the typical solution, again, solution in quotation marks that you then hear uh, from, from not all, not some, but, but many examiners is, okay, then let's proctor the students. Let's proctor them from front to back. Um, let's have a camera here. Let's have a camera there. So not only let's look um, at the student uh, through the camera that is um, on his computer so that we can see a face. Let's, let's have a second camera that maybe checks uh, what is really shown there on the screen. Let's maybe have a third camera that captures the whole scene from the top. Um, so this is a picture like that you see in, in these menus and instructions for online exams. This is how it looks um, really in practice then. And this is another example um, from Magdeburg, a manual, a handout that was given to students how to prepare for an online proctored exam. You also see an um, IKEA-like 
um, building instructions. How, how do you have to set up your room? How do you have to set up the table? Where, where must the camera be positioned? Uh, what, what, how to, how to um, scan the results, how to send them in and lots and lots of written text, what you can do, what you are allowed to do in the exam, what you should not do in the exam and so on and so on. I think it's not a good solution. Um, the, the persons who then have the pressure to deal with this and, and cannot really complain about this are the students. Uh, in my talk here, I call them the sufferers. Um, so I would ask myself uh, as a student, uh, if, if I do an exam like this year, what, what I will remember after the exam? Probably nothing about the content of the lecture. Um, if you ask me two or three years later, the only thing that I will remember is Uh, oh, there was there was a stupid professor who gave us like 30 pages of instructions for for the online exam. Um, th there's a funny comic um, about this from Constructive Amusement. Yeah, so um, th there was no English version. I will try to translate it. Um, the exam in times of of the pandemic, um, and then like the, the person here asked, oh, now you you, you uh, locked into your room for three weeks. Now, have you learned everything for the exam and are you well prepared? And then the student says, no, 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 I've, I've not looked at the material. Now I've, I've read all the instructions that I have to take care of when doing the online exam, the, the proctored exam. And so then, of course, there, there are video conferencing systems like Zoom where you can do this. There are apps that do this. Um, putting a lot of pressure on the students if they don't really work. Um, yeah, so here you can read reviews about Proctor exam, um, some app that is typically used for, for such um, video surveillance. Um, stops working, absolute crap. Uh, wonder what happens um, if, if it stops working during my actual exam. And then I would also ask as the students, how absurd can it, can it get? Um, Uh, so instructions, for example, say you have to show your, your ears um, because there might be like some, some small Bluetooth speaker in there uh, or other devices plugged in to help you sheeting. Um, this is some, some instructions uh, from an Austrian university. In, during the exam, you're allowed to have um, A chocolate bar, for example, but it must be unwrapped already because on the paper of the, uh, of the chocolate bar, you could have uh, some, some notes and you are allowed to have a, a bottle of water, but um, there must be no label on the water bottle because again, you, you might have some notes there. So as a student, I would ask myself many more open questions. What happens if I need to go to the toilet during such an online exam? Uh, what happens if a third person comes into the room? What happens if my internet connections breaks down? Uh, we have seen the survey. I don't remember the results, but I would say 80, 90% of us had problems with the internet connection, especially from home, maybe not from the university. Who will look at my camera pictures if, if there will be online surveillance of the exam? Um, do third persons need to know about the living conditions in my home? Probably not, for sure not. And yeah, so what, what happens if, if I get flagged for cheating for no reason. Uh, students told me they looked to the side because they typed something into their calculator and then they were, were not looking to the screen anymore and uh, were get flagged by some software. And if you already um, have um, stress by exams or if you get nervous taking exams as a student, I think all these questions will not really help you. And I would say the problem, again, problem in quotation marks, is not really new and the, the solutions haven't helped before. Uh, cheating was always there also in on-site and presence exams. Uh, students built a calculator case around their smartphone to cheat. Uh, students put notes under, under something like this here. Uh, students put notes in their... Uh, in, 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 in the wrapping of some drinks, uh, again, the water bottle. And uh, here, a student, this is also an interesting picture. A student has a third arm uh, so that he can, with his real arm, check his smartphone below the table. 
And still, if you, if you talk to examiners, they would say, no, we want to go back to on-site exams because on-site exams, they are still so, so, so safe, right? Um, there's a nice article from The Independent uh, just about uh, uh, a month ago where a medical student uh, implanted a Bluetooth device into his ear so that he can cheat in the exam. So now you could ask, okay, is this, is this really cheating or is this, uh, is this already part of the medical studies if you're able to implant a Bluetooth device into your ear? So I would say, okay, th these, the problems that we have seen, uh, they are not real problems. They are just symptoms of an outdated exam culture. And I think what we, how we do exams in the past is a little bit um, like if you lose your car keys in the dark, um, you don't look where you probably uh, lost them. You look where there is light. You look under the street lamp, uh, a so-called street lamp effect. And I think this is a little bit the same what we do with exams. We don't test what is really relevant. We test what is easy to test. And... Um, this is also th this also we see if we compare typical forms of testing versus uh, real world of work. In a, I, I would I would always say it's it's it would be quite strange if let's like, say uh, let's say Elon Musk says to his top developers now now here you are my ten person group of top developers now go please and develop the new charging system for our car or the new drivetrain for our car but the only tools that you are allowed to have is this old cal calculator and a pen and a sheet of paper and now go into this room there for three hours uh, disconnected from the outside world without internet access uh, without books without anything at all but please 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 uh, solve this really really um, challenging engineering task of of doing this and this developing this and this and in the real world, of course, we have all this stuff and we can communicate and col collaborate with other people, uh, which does not mean that we don't need to have any knowledge or any competencies by ourselves. But I think so. Um, our traditional exams are kind of have a blind spot um, in this direction here. So let's come to the real solution. And the real solution um, consists of, of, of many, many aspects. Uh, first thing is the internet is there. It, it won't go away anymore. Uh, we need to include and uh, we need to integrate exams into learning and also into our exam culture. Um, then, as said, traditional exams have kind of a blind spot or are blind in one eye. Uh, because we also test, uh, we only test professional competencies. We don't test usually any soft skills, uh, social skills, uh, skills, key skills like the in the in the four C model here with uh, creativity, communication, collaboration, and uh, critical thinking. And I think this is also what we should do in exams. It, it, it does not only matter that you can solve this engineering task, you also have to sell your solution to other people. You have to uh, convince other people that your solution is the good solution, is the right solution, and that the other solution is wrong. Okay, and um, I think also with traditional exams, too much depends on a single test. Yeah, if, if the exam is in a way you can do for one semester or two semesters, whatever you want, and then everything just depends on this 90 minutes at the end, I think it's not a good way of testing people. Uh, we should replace summative by formative assessment, um, also value feedback instead of just giving a grade to the students. So to summarize, from my point of view, good exams are authentic exams. Uh, they allow for key skills. Uh, they, they are contemporary. Uh, they are oriented on competencies. They usually don't have Googleable questions, but if they have, we should also accept the Googleable results. And they are feedback oriented. And I, I would not say bad exams, but uh, let's say, um, yeah, and, and they are open as open as possible. And I would not say bad exams, but, but not so good exams are, are these proctored exams that put lots of pressure to the students that are somehow demonstrating a kind of power relation between the examiners and the examinees. 
um, that are only there to give a grade to the students that are exclusively based on testing knowledge instead of competencies and that uh, put the, the grading um, or that are grading only the result but, but not the process of the student, how the student got to this um, result and they are unnecessarily restrictive. So this was my conclusion and now I would check back if there are some um, comments or questions in this question tool. And there is at least one. Um, and th the question is, how do you check the identity of the students in online courses if they never turn on the camera and they are, and are not allowed to, to make it mandatory? Um, so how we do, uh, how, how we did it in, in online exams and take home exams is um, the students needed, of course, to upload the results in our e-learning system. And to do so, they need their personal login. Um, and I, I would say they would not give this login away to someone else because with this login, you can also access your emails. You can access all other stuff related to the, to the university. You can also register or deregister for exams. So students will not give away their, their personal login. Um, so like this was one check. And the second check we did um, was students, when they uploaded their handwritten and photographed or scanned results, they should also make uh, put put their student id card on the same sheet of paper uh, so that we could also check for their student id card and so this was the second and the third thing that we did was um, we collected lots of handwritten solutions from the students over the semester over two semesters so we said to them uh, we with this we are able to check like your handwriting um, and if the handwriting in your exam strongly differs from your handwriting, what you have uh, submitted over two semesters, then it might be a strange time, sign. Okay. Um, the, the second question is, what is the proportion of assignments through the semester? Is, is the exam really needed? Um, yeah, a good question. Um, we have we have made very good experience with individualized personalized tasks that we give throughout uh, uh, the semester to the students and uh, they solve them they, they can also talk to each other and help each other they can not simply copy and plagiarize because as said it's individualized tasks um but uh, we don't want to have the pressure of correcting all this stuff and and taking lots of um giving giving lots of feedback so i have a tool program that also generates individualized sample solutions so the students can grade each other in some anonymous peer feedback process and give feedback to each other and this works very well and um, at the moment we just do like a, like a pre-exam a pre-test uh, with this but it, of course, it would also be an idea if uh, the examination regulations allow to also include this, um, these points or at least part of the grade into the final exam. Um, okay, the next question is how do you, how do you achieve compar comparability in a competence-based good exam style? Mm, to be honest, I don't, I don't really get the question. Um, Compar comparability in terms of what um, maybe maybe a good like indicator of of an exam result is if you look at the final distribution of the grades and so we have now over the recent uh, semesters tested or tried very different um, formats of online assessment and uh, online assessment on site or like 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 a hybrid exam students were on site but still would their, would submit their results online students were on site were still allowed to use the internet um, and in any case it was always so that uh, the the distribution of the grades at the end stayed more or less constant you can i think you can change a lot in the exams the grades will not change. The grades will always be um, comparable. So if if uh, the, the the grade distribution is a good measure, uh, a good measurement of compar compar comparability, I think this is good. Okay. 
Uh, next question, are you already applying the real solutions in your own exams? Yes, I do. Uh, there, there are some articles about this that I can share with you. Um, to what extent are we obligated to test soft skills? Yeah, of course you can you can test soft skills in an extra in an extra lecture. But uh, let's say testing soft skills by a written exam is really um, again a not so good idea. And I think soft skills are most of these skills are really competencies, and you can also only show competencies by applying them to something. And why not also applying them uh, by by solving? Um, engineering problems, mathematical problems, physics problems, whatever. Um, so, of course, it's a good idea to have a separate lecture to um, make students aware of these skills and to teach them. Uh, but I think to test them, it's a good way to integrate this also in other things. Okay, and now there are more, more questions. Um, so I need to enlarge this a little bit here. My issue with proctored online exams is the scalability of setting it up for a large group. Yeah, definitely. So if you if you want to look at 100 camera windows at a time, uh, you need at least, I would say 20, uh, no, no, uh, so 20 people per group. So you need maybe four, five, six persons to do so. Um, Yeah, so the, the scalability is of course an issue. Um, but but I would argue if you if you really really have large groups, you need to have online exams that let's check themselves where you have where you have um, tasks like in the Moodle or Elias or Stack tasks. Uh, where you just click a button and then it will automatically check the result. Still, if um, if the tasks are well designed and competence oriented, if not all students get the same tasks and if the tasks are not Googleable, uh, then this also works for larger groups. And okay, there is another question here. What part in percent? Um, okay, I need to scroll down. What part in percent do your exams must have of the final grade? Um, I'm not sure about this. Um, Usually you need to have like 40% to pass the exam, um, but I'm not sure about uh, how many. Okay, so I think this more or less uh, answered all questions. Now with this, I will stop the recording and then um, we, can, we can also have like um, more questions orally if we have time.